back to my channel. It's time for an old new segment on True Crime Tuesday. But before we get into the story, for all you guys who are new to my channel, I post videos every Tuesday and Sunday about true crime, social issues and everything else that I find interesting. If you enjoyed the video, please remember to give me a thumbs up, comment and subscribe. Do it now. This story is about the most sickening acts of torture and murder. It's called Madame LaLaurie's most sickening acts of cruelty. Guys, I'm talking about a real shocker tonight. These are crimes that took place centuries ago in the US. Guys, remember, this is not the type of story that anyone would be ever prepared for. This is, oh my God. This is about a house of horrors where unbelievably appalling acts of unspeakable torture and murder had taken place. Some of the details in this story are very graphic and would be too distressing for some viewers. I strongly recommend viewer discretion. This video is not for anyone under the age of 18. This story is about a torture chamber which revealed bodies of tortured human beings beaten, bruised and bloodied to within an inch of their lives. Their eyes spooned out, skin flayed and mouths filled with excrement and then sewn shut. Can you believe this? It was the year 1834 a mansion in New Orleans where a lady of the house was apparently living alone. No workers, no slaves, a mansion without slaves in the 1800s. Hmm, doesn't add up, right? Guys, I'm reminding you again, this was 1834. A fire had broken out in the mansion and concerned neighbors had rushed to help evacuate the residents to safety, while also dousing the fire with barrels and barrels and barrels of water. No workers? Was the burning question on the minds as they started searching the house? And what did they see in the attic? Bodies of tortured African slaves. One particularly disturbing report of what the neighbors had found claimed there was a woman whose bones had been broken and reset so that she resembled a crab. Have you ever heard of such sick, sadistic torture? Another woman's body was revealed that she had been wrapped in human intestines. The horrified witness also said that there were people with holes in their skulls and wooden spoons near them that would have been used to stir their brains? Oh my God, all these horrific stories were coming out. Some said there were only a handful of bodies. Others claimed there were over 100 victims. There were horrendous stories also that there were dead bodies in the attic that were mutilated beyond recognition and the organs of the corpses were missing. Who was the mistress of this mansion? Madame Maury Delphine LaLaurie. Who was Madame LaLaurie? Let's go back a little. She was born Maury Delphine McCarty in 1780 in New Orleans to a wealthy white family. Her family had moved from Ireland and then Spanish control Luciana, a generation before her. And she was only the second generation to be born in America. Mari Delphine McCarty married three times and had five children. She had a reputation as being a loving and very caring mother. Her first husband with whom she had a daughter was a Spaniard named Don Ramon de Lopez, a high-ranking Spanish officer. 
Don Ramon's untimely death made Marie Delphine very sad. And four years later, she married banker, lawyer, and legislator Sean Blanc, an affluent Frenchman. Together, they had four children, three daughters and a son. Delphine Blanc continued to be a loving mother as people say they witnessed her love for her kids. After the death of Blanc, Delphine married a much younger doctor. Leonard Louis Nicholas LaLaurie, her third and final husband. He was often away and mostly left his wife to her own devices. In 1831, Madame LaLaurie purchased a three-story mansion at 1140 Royal Street in the French Quarter. Now at that time, it was a common thing for rich society women to keep slaves in their homes. As many society women did at the time, Madame LaLaurie too kept slaves. Madame LaLaurie was known for treating her slaves with so much kindness and politeness in public and was also widely known for setting two of them free in 1819 and in 1832. However, soon rumors began to spread that the politeness exhibited in public may have been just an act. Guys, the rumors of her cruelty turned out to be true and released shock waves through the community, forever changing the public's perception of Madame LaLaurie as a respectable member of society, labeling her as the savage mistress of New Orleans. Though New Orleans had laws, unlike most of the southern states, that protected slaves from unusually cruel punishments, the conditions at the LaLaurie mansion were unbelievably ghastly and appalling. Now to a horror story about how she treated a cook. Guys, I'm warning you again. These details could be very distressing to some viewers. Please employ viewer discretion. This is not for viewers under the age of 18. Rumors were buzzing around that Madame LaLaurie kept her 70-year-old cook chained to the stove and made him starve. There were other stories that said she was keeping secret slaves for her doctor husband to practice Haitian voodoo medicine on. Do you know what Haitian voodoo medicine is? Well, I found out that Haitian voodoo has been considered an African-American religion organized around a god, sanctuaries, priests, fraternities and rituals honoring the spirits of the dead and the ancestors. Practitioners of this system believe there are healing powers involved. There were other reports that her cruelty extended to her daughters too, who she would punish and whip if they tried to help the slaves in any way. How did she turn to be so sadistic? Unbelievable, right? There is more, guys. A man who was so scared of a brutal punishment had thrown himself out of a third-story window. Choosing to die rather than be subjected to Madame LaLaurie's torture. Would you believe that the st third-story window was then cemented shut and is still visible today? Now, another disturbing story about a 12-year-old slave girl, Leah. As Leah was apparently brushing Madame LaLaurie's hair, she pulled a little too hard, causing LaLaurie to fly into a demented rage. She whipped the girl mercilessly, and the child, who ran from LaLaurie's clutches, threw herself off the window to her death. Witnesses saw LaLaurie burying the girl's corpse, and the police were forced to find her $300 and make her sell nine of her slaves. Of course, they all look the other way, says a report, when she purchased them all back. Shocking. What was going on, guys? Remember the day after the fire? After Leah's death, the locals began to doubt LaLaurie's even more and they were expecting to see the slaves trying to get out of the burning attic. 
but what they saw as I described to you was pure horror. The mobs of thousands of enraged townspeople ransacked the home, smashing the windows and tearing down doors until almost nothing remained but the outer walls. Though the house still stands on the corner of Royal Street, the whereabouts of Madame LaLaurie became a mystery. After the hullabaloo ended and things quietened down a little bit, Madame LaLaurie and her driver went missing. Everyone assumed them to have fled to Paris. However, no evidence has been found of her in Paris. Her daughter claimed to have received letters from her, though no one had ever seen proof of them either. In the late 1930s, an old cracked copper plate was found in New Orleans St. Louis Cemetery, bearing the name LaLaurie Madame Delphine McCarthy, LaLaurie's maiden name. The inscription on the plaque in French claims that Madame LaLaurie died in Paris on December 7, 1842. However, the mystery remains alive as other records located in Paris claim that she had died in 1849. Despite the plaque and the records, it's widely believed that while LaLaurie made it to Paris, she had later come back to New Orleans under a new name and continued her reign of terror. Either way, Madame LaLaurie's reputation has been cemented as one of the most brutal and demented women in history. Shocking, guys. Well, that's it from me tonight. Keep well, and I'll be back soon. Good night.